Good morning. My name is Catherine Lochnan, and I have the pleasure of bringing you the good news today um, on Thursday, April the 22nd. The Gospel comes from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken, and so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The first three canonical Gospels contain many parallel texts, but Matthew and Luke had access to Mark's Gospel, which was the first to be written. All three Gospels include the story of the calling of Peter and variations on the phrase, follow me and I will make you fish for people. But the wonderful story of what is known as the miraculous draft of fishes is found only in Luke. It is worth taking a moment to wonder why this might be. It is thought that Luke's gospel may have been written in Rome and was largely intended for a Gentile readership. Rome was, of course, the capital city of the Roman Empire, of which Palestine was a colony. Peter had gone to Rome to spread the good news and either Peter or his followers may have provided Luke with Petrine material not found in Mark or Matthew. Peter's colorful personality shines through the New Testament, where he is depicted in various guises. He is humble, exuberant, passionate, protective, remorseful, frightened, and faithful. It is tempting to think that Peter told Luke about his first encounter with Jesus about how Jesus borrowed his boat in order to preach to the people on shore and then urged him to venture back out into deep water and lower his nets again, this time with resounding success. At that point, Peter became a true believer, confessed his unworthiness, and gave up everything to follow Jesus. This is both the penultimate big fish story and an unforgettable metaphor for the growing group of Christ's followers. <clears throat> Peter was martyred in Rome, crucified upside down in Nero's circus, and buried, according to tradition, in the Roman cemetery, which is now beneath St. Peter's Basilica. If you visit the cemetery, you can see what is credibly believed to be his tomb, as well as the Roman sarcophagi holding the remains of other Christian martyrs, which were placed in as close proximity as possible. They can be identified by the early Christian symbols crudely carved into them. Several bear the martyr's palm, and some bear the fish. Ichthys, which is Greek for fish, was a secret symbol used by early Christians. It not only recalls the gospel story, the letters are an acronym for Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. In 2018, I had the opportunity to travel to the Holy Land with Professor Scott Lewis, a New Testament scholar. The experience of visiting key biblical sites completely changed the way I visualized Bible stories. I was disappointed to discover that the River Jordan is now little more than a stream, and I was prepared to be disappointed by the Sea of Galilee. Instead, I was completely bowled over by our first glimpse of it. It is incredibly beautiful, 
a most vivid blue surrounded by relatively lush rolling hills. It is, in fact, not a true sea, but a freshwater lake named Genezaret, the name used by Luke. Scott pointed out places along the shore where Jesus may have preached from a boat. It is easy to see how the coves and sandy beaches could be used to create a natural auditorium. This arrangement also enabled Jesus to avoid being crushed by the crowd, while at the same time making him visible and audible. <clears throat> We also have a very good idea of what Peter's boat looked like. A first century fishing boat, nicknamed the Jesus Boat, was discovered a few years ago and has since been excavated and placed on display at Yigel Allen Galilee Boat Museum. You can find pictures online. It is a wide, low wooden boat with a sail. We went out in a modern replica on the Sea of Galilee. It was an exhilarating experience. Let's try to imagine ourselves sitting on that shore after Jesus has finished teaching for the day and listen to the exchange between Jesus and Peter. Peter had given up fishing for the day after catching nothing all night. He had already washed and hung up his nets and decided to call it a day. When Jesus told him to go out into deep water and try again, Peter did so, showing great faith, and the result exceeded his wildest imagining. From this point on, he became one of the followers of Jesus, a fisher of people. This story may remind us of times when we tried to do something without success and decided to give up. At those times, if we pray for guidance and listen for the voice of the Spirit who dwells within us, we may be able to discern the way forward and know whether we should accept the situation or try again perhaps approaching it in a different way. Let us, like Peter, put our faith in Christ and humbly pray for guidance whenever we find ourselves coming up against seemingly insurmountable obstacles. And remember that, like Peter, we have been called to participate in the ongoing work of building God's kingdom on earth. It's wonderful to be part of this great community of faith. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you.